I've been learning reinforcement learning for a while, which means I need to make it more complicated. Watch these other videos first, because I don't think I can explain everything again. Last time I talked about reinforcement learning, I said I wanted to try making a robot play Slither.io. I did make a robot to play this game, but it wasn't very good, so I'll cover the idea quickly before I move on to what this video is actually about, the agent critic method. Slither.io is one of those games you can play online with countless people, each of whom controls a snake or a worm or something. You eat food to get bigger, or you can poop food to move faster. But if your head bumps anyone else, your body decomposes and everyone else eats your corpse. So, if you're really good at this game, you can kill other people and then eat them. Yay! I made a program which opens up the website, maximizes the screen, and joins a game as a snake. Then the program takes a screenshot and checks a few things. If it sees this in the corner, it knows our snake died, so it starts another game. Otherwise, it formats the screenshot a bit and feeds it through a neural network, which outputs a few numbers between 0 and 1. Three numbers choose where the program puts the mouse, guiding our snake around. Either the mouse stays where it is, or it orbits clockwise, or it orbits counterclockwise. The other number chooses whether or not the mouse is clicking. That makes the snake poop to move faster. I tried rewarding the model based on the snake's length, but that's where I hit a wall. I had trouble getting the length numbers right here using Google's Optical Character Recognition Program Tesseract or my own number detecting model. Sometimes snakes run behind the numbers, and that makes the data quite noisy, so maybe I'll make a robot slither around some other time. Anyway, I didn't like the way I made the snake either keep moving, turn a certain amount left, or turn a certain amount right. These are discrete options, and I'd prefer continuous options, so the snake can move left or right in small amounts or large amounts, or whatever it likes. Apparently, the way to achieve this is with the actor-critic method of reinforcement learning. This example, on the classic inverted pendulum linked below, doesn't use continuous options, but it does explain the actor-critic method anyway. The neural network here has two outputs. One is the actor, which gives the probability of accelerating left versus accelerating right. The other output is the critic, which predicts the reward it will get with whichever move it ends up picking. For each move, we input the inverted pendulum's state and get both of those outputs. We use PyTorch's distributions package to pick a move with the probability the actor describes. We also add the expected reward and the log probability of picking the move we picked to a list of memories. Then the inverted pendulum carries out that move and gets the real reward, which we save too. When the inverted pendulum inevitably fails, we train it up. First we apply discounts to the rewards it got, so the model can consider each reward with respect to the future. Then we compare expected rewards to actual rewards to make losses for the critic. For the actor's losses, we subtract from each actual reward the model's expected reward and multiply that by the log probability we kept. Add all those losses together to make one loss for the whole model. Backpropagating this loss should improve the actor and the critic. Then we delete everything in the memory and start a new game. I think this example of the inverted pendulum works way better than the last one I tried, and it improves quite quickly. So I tried applying these ideas in PyBullet. The blue sphere here just stays still, and the red sphere is rewarded for getting close enough to it, penalized for running too far away, and also penalized for wasting my time for too long. Each game begins with the spheres at random positions, with the red sphere moving in a random direction. The red sphere has a camera which is pointing in the direction it's headed, providing observations which it feeds through convolution and regression, a long short-term memory layer. 
First, I implemented a discrete set of actions, just to make sure it would work. In each time step, the red sphere considers its observations and chooses the probabilities of bumping its velocity 30 degrees left or 30 degrees right. It took quite a lot of training, about 15 hours, but the training worked. In these plots, the blue line is the model's success rate over the last 100 games, while the green and orange lines are the highest and lowest probabilities the model supplied in those 100 games. Over time, the probabilities appear more decisive, and the success skyrockets. Here's how the red sphere acts at the end. So next, I implemented actor critic reinforcement. Now the red sphere's model outputs its expected reward and an average between 1 and minus 1 and a standard deviation between 1 and 0. Using PyTorch's distribution package again, we use the average and standard deviation to pick an angle from a normal bell curve. Instead of discrete options, one or the other, the model can pick any angle for turning left or right. I applied about 15 hours of training again. Let's take a look. The green line is the model's success rate over the last 100 games. The blue lines are the maximum and minimum standard deviations the model gave us. And the red lines are the maximum and minimum averages the model gave us. I, I added 1 and divided by 2 just to keep these lines between 0 and 1 like the others so I could plot them together. At the end of training, it really seems like the model is picking various averages and standard deviations to get the reward pretty consistently. Check this out. I'm kind of flabbergasted I got this working. I bet it would work better if I trained it another 15 hours or something. But now I want to learn something else complicated and try implementing that. That's how I think here at Thinkster. Bye bye By the way, I've got a Patreon at patreon.com slash Thinkster. I want to thank all these squidlings and elder squids. Thanks. <laughs>